Hello and welcome everybody. I made a very, very early video about the best archetypes for solo players that was based on the informations at that time available, right before the game came out. So it is about time to do a proper update with a lot more hands-on experience and tons of different builds I played around with. I thought the most interesting way to do this would be to make one of those tier list videos that are of course always heavily opinion based and feel free to disagree and explain why in the comment section. I try my best to be as objectively as possible by holding the same criteria against every archetype. Those criteria hopefully reflect the most valuable things a class brings to the table for solo players. For this reason, increased survivability, flexibility, avoidance or enemy attention diversion have a higher value in this list than the raw damage output, which is still important, but not as important as staying alive or being able to revive yourself with no other players around. We have 12 classes to cover, so buckle up, here we go. I start with the 5 classes you have available in your first playthrough before unlocking the additional archetypes. Kicking this list off is the Handler, one of the strongest archetypes for lone wolves so that we have a nice benchmark for the other classes right away. And I place this, surprise surprise, directly in the S tier. If you play on your own, this class will maybe give you the easiest time you can have during your first levels with nearly no items available. The archetype does have some downsides, but let's look at the impressive things it provides for solo players. The good boy does a pretty decent job in diverting enemy attention, especially when using the first skill that is immediately available. The damage perk buffs ranged and skill damage and the latter is effectively the damage your dog deals. Support and attack dog are great skills when fighting flying bosses or anything the dog cannot reach from the ground. You also get a self revive on a very short cooldown and higher movement speed with the team perk. The handler works very well with the cooldown reduction build, where you can have up to 100% uptime for your skills. Those skills are also very flexible, which lets you adapt easier to different scenarios and boss fights. The class trait is only useful when playing with summons or for explosion builds, so you don't kill yourself. Apart from that, the class trait is useless for solo players. In combination with the necessity to max out the rugged trait on higher difficulties, it can give you a 20 point trait deficit compared to other classes. This is less of an issue with now 85 trait points available, but still a downside. Despite this and the not always reliable companion AI, this is a very solid S tier archetype when playing on your own. Next up we have the Hunter. This archetype is really tied to builds that maximize pure range damage, because the damage perk only affects this damage type. A hunter as a secondary class cripples its skills and only really shines as primary archetype due to the ability to prolong skill duration. The skills are all pretty potent damage buffs and if you enjoy a glass cannon build then this class is perfect. In terms of survivability, it really needs an advanced or skilled player to shine, with the usage of Hunter's Shroud, maybe in combination with the Invader as secondary class, to build a very elusive and hard-hitting Hunter, a typical high-risk, high-reward archetype. And there's nothing wrong with that, but for a solo player I would place it in the C tier. The lack of survivability features is somewhat compensated with high damage, and you know, if offense is your best defense and you build around that, then this class is of course top tier. In a pure damage tier list I would place it in the S tier, but the class trait is only useful in some builds. You are more or less forced to use it as primary class and you lack any kind of survivability features. So C tier it is from a solo player's perspective. Medic is up next and right off the bat another S tier archetype when playing alone. It does lack a self revive but apart from that this class has all the tools you wish for. The all damage perk makes it perfect for any kind of build and the infamous relic spam tank builds rely on having this as primary archetype. If you combine this class with a lot of passive healing you can get constant free relic charges that are 25% faster to use and that can save you more often than you think. 
Triage is one of the best traits in the game, especially when combining it with regrowth and the tranquil heart. Healing shield is an excellent skill to simply tank through high damage attacks, even on apocalypse difficulty. It does have a rather high cooldown though. So yeah, undoubtedly one of the best classes for solo players that work great as primary and secondary archetype. Gunslinger may not be available on your first playthrough for all players depending on your game version, but I decided to include it into the initial available classes anyway. It is very similar to the Hunter, a very potent S tier damage class with a great damage perk and Bulletstorm is an incredible damage skill on a very short cooldown. Ammo Reserves as trade is more useful than the Hunter's long shot, but overall it has the same up and downsides for solo players. So I will put it into C tier here and expect to be punished by all glass cannon damage enjoyers who would say learn to play or if you can't avoid damage then you're not playing the game the right way. It is always important for your mental health to get some emotional steam off your system and I can take it. Finally Challenger as the last archetype that is available right from the start. Although the self revive is on a much longer cooldown, it is also the most reliable revive option. In combination with a strong back trade, which is an S tier trade in itself, and a mixture of great damage reducing or damage buffing skills, I would place this class straight into the S tier. The damage perk is somewhat range dependent, but also the highest all damage buff you can get in the game. The team perk in combination with two charges of war stomp makes for a very reliable option to reduce outgoing damage from the enemy by 15 to 25 percent. This effect is the only way to reduce incoming damage further after achieving the 80 percent damage reduction cap. Instead of for example 100 damage before damage reduction effects set in, you will only be hit by 85 or 75 damage. The Challenger's team perk and the Song of Aphia weapon mod are to my knowledge the only ways to achieve that and they do stack by the way. Now if you look at the three S tier archetypes so far, then any combination of those three classes will be an exceptional great starting point for any solo player friendly build. The synergies between those archetypes are simply amazing, but we have much more options once you unlocked all classes, so let's take a look at the other seven archetypes. Summoner is a very solid A tier in my opinion, and if you look at those undying relics spam tank builds, then you will often see the mandatory medic in combination with the summoner as secondary class. You have a pure tank pet that can deal great damage, but it is less effective in drawing enemy attention than the handler's dog. It is also too squishy, at least on the highest difficulty, even with 10 points in rugged. The two flyers are great damage summons who have no difficulty reaching flying enemies or bosses on another platform, but they are even more squishy outside those relic spam builds where they are constantly healed. Regrowth is another S tier trait and the summoner is very useful as primary and secondary archetype. The wonky pet AI, no self revive option and a damage perk that only pushes mod and skill damage with rather long cooldowns once a pet dies prevent an S tier placement here. But overall a great solo player class if you build around its strengths. Next is the Arken, one of the more uniquely designed classes in Remnant too, with a very specific emphasis on anything weapon mod related. I really like those niche archetypes and the Archon has a nice defensive skill with reality rune and you can use all the additional mod power generation apart from enhancing the damage of your mods also to use utility and defensive mods more frequently. So there are some nice options here for solo players, but they are way more niche than others. The class trait is very useful if you build around skills and mods, but falls overall more into the mm, nice to have category, apart from those specific builds. Again, an amazing overall class, and in this context a solid B tier because it has more survivability tools than a hunter or gunslinger. The very niche nature of the class and even more restricted damage perk than the summoner's one makes it a great addition to specific builds, but all things considered I place it in the middle of the pack. 
Let's pick another cool archetype concept, the invader. For players building around evasion, this is an amazing class and goes straight into A tier. It has very powerful skills to avoid damage and the class trait is pure gold. Especially when you combine untouchable with fitness, more iframes with a lot more ground covered per dodge and then skills like wormhole on a very short cooldown or void cloak as basically a brief unkillable window on top. If you combine this with cooldown reduction builds or the hunter shroud skill, you can create crazy good avoidance setups. So why not S tier? It is not even because of the non-existing self-revive, but because the damage perk effects only ranged and melee damage and can be very inconsistent. Like the explorer's damage perk, it is baked into a specific mechanic which I don't enjoy and can constantly fall off and needs to be ramped up again. And you don't even get an all damage buff to make up for it. So it falls just slightly behind the medic in terms of usefulness for solo players, but it is a great class if you are looking for a more active playstyle and like to zip around on the battlefield. Speaking of the inconsistent damage buff, the explorer is next. And quite frankly, I place this class at the bottom of this list. Not because it is a bad design class, but it is super niche. The damage buff is, as mentioned, inconsistent, although at least an all damage buff. The skills like more movement speed or random buff are somewhat okay, but other classes have simply much more useful skills and the randomness of gold digger doesn't help either. I have seen some interesting builds with this class, but there's just too much randomness and inconsistency in place for my taste. And keeping an eye on the damage buff is another layer of micromanaging that can kill you very fast. The class is unmatched for traversing quickly through the world, maybe avoiding encounters entirely and exploring secrets, but it is neither a reliable source for damage nor survivability in a solo player setup. So D tier it is, but I'm happy to hear your opinions on this. Engineer is next on the list. I was more than just a little torn apart if I would put it into A or B tier and finally settled on a very strong B tier. The class trait is a must for every build. I don't remember the last time I did not put 10 points into Fortify. You also get a damage reduction while standing close to the turret or carry it. And I love the overall class design with a very unique approach. Check out my latest Handler Engineer build with 75% cooldown reduction. It is just a crazy good combination. But I do think it offers slightly less than the invader or summoner for solo players. The damage buff only affects skills and there are not a lot direct damage skills in the game. I also find fiddling around with the turret sometimes irritating. Changing the targeting behavior, picking it up, placing it or using overclock is all baked into the same button and that can lead to wrong inputs in hectic situations. I know the die-hard engineer fans will butcher me for this and I love the class myself, but for this specific list I place it in a very strong B tier, definitely the best archetype in this row. The Alchemist is the final vanilla game class and falls into the S tier. It offers everything the medic has, like an all damage buff, but a weaker class trait. It can compensate this with being the third class that has a self revive, although you have to time it correctly. But the skills fire up extremely quick and the short cooldown makes it even possible to use the revive twice in a long boss fight. The skills are also very versatile and let you easily adapt to different scenarios. They are somewhat similar to the handler's active skills. And finally, the ability to equip three concoctions is an often overlooked but very strong class perk when used in the primary slot, combining for example more health with more armor and an additional passive heal on top can make you very resilient very quick. It is a very adaptive class that offers a wide spectrum of possibilities and can shine as primary and secondary archetype. Finally we have the Ritualist from the first DLC, another class I really like overall and I'm a huge fan of damage over time based builds. For me, it goes into the B tier. It has a 5% reduced enemy damage baked into the perks and the damage perk is an 
all damage effect. Status effect builds also require less time on target for you and the damage over time effects do a lot of the heavy lifting in boss fights. That means more time to focus on the environment or dodging attacks. The class trait is very role specific and none of the skills has a special kicker for solo players. So it lands in the middle of the pack slightly above hunter and gunslinger because of some damage reduction and all damage perk and status builds can be less stressful when and playing alone. And here we are. I'm sure you would have placed some archetypes differently and I will gladly discuss with you anything non-root in the comment section. I'm also very excited which other archetypes Gunfire Games has in store for us in the upcoming three DLCs. The Ritualist was for sure a dope addition. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more Remnant 2 content. For now this is all. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.